Tom Hanks, Steven Spielberg, and the Coen brothers made a movie that nobody is talking about. Is there a Hollywood Cold War going on? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Bridge of Spies. They've got our guy, our spy pilot. They've got their spy. We want you to negotiate the swap. I'm an insurance lawyer. Are you good at what you do? This will be a first for the both of us. You should be careful. Do you know how people will look at us? The family of a man trying to free a traitor? Every person matters. Why are we hanging him? He's a spy! We need to know what the Russian was telling you. We're not having this conversation. Don't go Boy Scout on me. We don't have a rule book here. We call it the Constitution, and that's what makes us Americans. See, Steven Spielberg's production company, DreamWorks, has made it very well known that after Spielberg's The Big Friendly Giant next year, it will not be renewing its distribution deal with Disney, and will instead move to another studio, most likely Universal, where Spielberg can oversee the resurgence of both the Jaws and Back to the Future franchises a la Jurassic World. So perhaps Disney isn't so motivated to promote Bridge of Spies, instead focusing their promotional efforts on in-house films like The Good Dinosaur and Star Wars The Force Awakens. Now, one could say this lack of promotion isn't personal and is simply the result of too many big pictures on Disney's release slate, crowding out the little movies. But then we've seen an awful lot of publicity for the finest hours, right? And let's be honest, if my company was going to lose the opportunity to distribute Ghost in the Shell, starring Scarlett Johansson, I'd take it kind of personally. Besides, Disney already ran very aggressive promotional campaigns and award campaigns for War Horse and Lincoln, getting little return at the box office or in actual awards wins. And the less said about the fifth estate, the better. But with DreamWorks almost certainly headed for Universal and Spielberg already set to direct The Big Friendly Giant and Ready Player One next, who's really going to get hurt here if Bridge of Spies flops? Well, Tom Hanks for one, who'd certainly prefer another Captain Phillips over another Saving Mr. Banks, Cloud Atlas, or Larry Crown. But he has another Da Vinci Code movie set for next year, Inferno, so he's relatively safe as well. That leaves the Coen brothers, who will be zero for two when it comes to writing Oscar contenders for other directors, considering Unbroken's lack of traction last year. Yet they also have the hotly anticipated Hail Caesar coming out next year. Hmm, ironically, while Bridge of Spies is about people who have everything to lose, it seems the people who made the movie itself have almost nothing to lose. And finally, perhaps the real culprit here is that pop culture is burned out on both the Cold War and the 1960s, thanks to popular TV shows like The Americans and Mad Men. Plus, in a year overflowing with high-tech spy movies, Bridge of Spies might be just too old school to compete. Just ask the man from UNCLE. Another movie killed by bad advertising. And I have to say, even having now seen this movie and knowing how good it is, when I saw an ad for it the other day, I was still like, whew, that movie looks bad. But it's a really good movie. And I'm also very impressed, uh, not only with the quality of the film, but with what Steven Spielberg is able to do with a mere $40 million. This film doesn't look like it's cutting any corners. They must have not like taken any salary and are relying almost exclusively on back-end points, which would be very commendable. And I think there's a very good argument for that being how all actors should be paid, or at least uh, big name talent that warrant the big paychecks up front, but don't always earn them. Uh, but another reason that I think Steven Spielberg was able to uh, make this movie for a mere $40 million is because it's a small movie. It's not some epic story with lots of, you know, big explosions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, it's the kind of movie that needs good writing and good acting. And it has those things in spades. But do you know what else has those things in spades these days? television. And yes, TV and movies continue to wage a bloody battle, their own bridge of spies, I guess you could say, when it comes to competing for your time with mid-range uh, mid uh, stories, right? Uh, and I have to say, I don't, I can't really give you any good reason to pay to see this movie on the big screen. I mean, if you want to go to the movies, you should definitely see this. But if you're trying to save your money, if there are other films that you want to see in the movie theater, this can definitely wait uh, for something for you to watch when it becomes available on streaming. But that being said, you shouldn't miss this movie. You should definitely see it at some point 
because entertainment doesn't get any better than this. It's a really well told story. And it's also very timely. I, I really appreciated how it showed that uh, people in this country have always been capable of cruelty uh, towards others and each other. And that also the government can be incredibly brutal. Uh, this is something that due to the production code that was in place, you know, during the, uh, like from the 40s to like through the 60s, you know, it created this mis this um, misconception that that's what the world was actually like. But instead, uh, Hollywood had decided to police itself and present that image to the public. Uh, but that that is not true. And so you can see a lot of similarities to the way that, to, to the way that people act today. But on the flip side of that, I also really like what Bridge of Spies has to say about how difficult it is to be noble in the face of that brutality and cruelty, uh, and also what it really means to be an American. And I thought that was a really great message. It does have one bit of propaganda, though, where it tries to say that Americans, at least back then, did not torture our prisoners and supposed spies. We were super nice to them, uh, whereas the enemy, of course, tortured their prisoners. And I think we all know, thanks to the internet, that that's certainly not the case today, and I think is very likely not the case even back then, especially considering, as how you can see depicted in this movie, we were treating each other. So you think we were that mean to each other, but with the Russian spy, we were like, we gotta make sure we're above the book here, guys. Uh, also, the other thing is, is that there are some really interesting and harrowing images of refugees trying to get out of East Berlin right when they were putting the wall up. And that imagery can't help but remind you of what's happening right now in Europe with Middle Eastern Middle Easterners trying to get into Germany. Uh, and I think that when you see that here, perhaps that's one of the reasons that Germany has been the most open in Europe to the refugee crisis because they've actually gone through it themselves. Those scenes were very interesting. And I've, I've uh, of course, we've seen a lot of movies about the Cold War in East and West Berlin, but the the spy game here, I think, was seemed very fresh and new. It's something that I had not uh, seen before. So I really like this movie. Again, the writing is excellent. The acting across the board, very, very good. The standouts, though, are uh, Tom Hanks, of course, who is at the top of his game, but also, I have his name here, I want to make sure I get it right, Mark Rylance. He's done some uh, a lot of BBC television. He was also um, in The Gunman with Sean Penn recently, but he was spectacular here, a very nuanced performance that I was really impressed with. I mean, he's playing a Russian spy, but the movie is able to, I think, successfully make you see the areas of gray that it isn't a black and white situation and that Americans being Americans should recognize that. And I thought that was not only um, a very noble argument, but it was, it's impressively made in the film. So definitely kudos to Steven Spielberg for showing us once again how it's done. And I think that Bridge of Spies, while again, I can't recommend that you pay full price to see it in a movie theater, I think that it would be a shame if you missed it. So keep an eye on it and either go and see it in theaters if you're looking for a movie to go and see or if you just really like this type of movie and don't want to wait. But uh, make sure you put it on a list somewhere because again, it would be a shame if you did miss out on this film. And trust me, it's good even though the ads are so, 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 so terrible. All right, thank you so much for tuning into my review. I look forward to continuing the conversation with you down below, and you can check out some other episodes right now.